Five tips in five minutes to help you edit better drone videos. Today's Friday, five minutes to better filmmaking and photography. Hey, if you don't know me, my name's Jake and I create content here to help solo creators on the go. People like me who are on the go creating small commercial projects or stuff for here on YouTube. So I test and review equipment here in Alaska and I do tips and tutorials on how to use that equipment so you can tell better stories and make smart decisions when you go to buy a piece of gear. On today's Friday 5 Minutes to Better Filmmaking and Photography, we're talking about five tips you can use to edit your drone videos. The first step when I sit down to edit any of my videos, drone videos or not, is find the right piece of music because when you edit with music in mind that helps you to get clearer edit points it helps you to figure out the rhythm and the pacing of the shots that you're going to use and so finding the right piece of music and then using that music as your guide to edit your footage too will give you a much clearer picture of how your footage to should fit together and how it should flow from shot to shot Typically, you want to edit where the shots change with the rhythm of the music. And so if something in the music changes, that's a place you want to have your shot change. But the other thing that music does is provide you kind of a way to build up a shot list to where you get the kind of climactic, the epic shot toward the end because music typically has a crescendo and it builds up toward a big climax. And then that's the spot where you want to put your hero shot or your best footage that you caught captured with your drone. Now that you've found your piece of music and you've got your footage in your timeline, the next thing you wanna do is go skim through all of your footage and get rid of any jerky motion at all because jerky motion just doesn't look good in drone video. So skimming through your footage, make sure you find the spots where the motion is the smoothest, you get the right kind of pan that you want or lift that you want or movement that you want, but there are no jerks or tweaks or weird motions in that particular footage because that will end up giving you the best looking footage and the best looking video in the end that you could possibly get. So now you've got your music and you've got the best parts of your shots all sitting in there and now it's time to start putting these together with the music. And one thing that's important is don't keep all of your shots the same length. Don't have them change on the same rhythm of the music all the way through because that will get boring. You want to vary your shot length. So you want to have shorter sections, quicker shots, and mix them in with longer shots. And I think as you go through your footage, you will find out typically like this is a much better longer shot than this other piece of footage is. So you're gonna use that as your long shot. But it's important to vary your shot lengths to keep people interested and to keep the movement and the pacing of your video moving forward with people wanting to see what happens next. This next tip is really important, but it's also important that you think about it ahead of time when you're actually filming your footage, and that's that you wanna be able to mix your shots between really wide, really high shots that show everything in perspective with also using close shots, shots that are close up to your subject, shots that are close up to whatever it is you're filming, because it adds interest. So you wanna be able to have a good mix of wide, medium, and close shots to whatever you're filming so that you can mix and match these shots as you go through your editing process because that will also help keep people interested and provide different perspectives as you're going. And this last tip is another one that's important to think about before you actually go out to film, but it really comes into play in editing and that's mixing your shots that have movement, which your drone shots having movement are fantastic because you get such great movement and it unveils information that keeps people interested in your video, but also you wanna mix in some static shots. And a lot of people don't think about using drones as a static camera like you would as a camera on a tripod, but they work really well in that aspect because they do give you such great stable, steady footage, even if the drone isn't moving. So don't forget to mix your shots that have a lot of movement in them with shots that have static and no movement in them other than your subject matter.
want other ways you can improve your videography or photography in five minutes or less, I put together a playlist right here of videos just like this one that will help you, give you some short tips, quick tips, things that you can put into use today. Click or tap there. I'll see you in one of those videos. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream Wednesday nights, 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. See you again soon in the next video. Cheers.